Imagine a life in constant pain. For 12-year-old Bailey Turner, that's his reality. He's had juvenile arthritis since he was six months old. We're about to meet him and his mum. But first, let's take a look at some of his story. Bailey Turner can't remember a time when he wasn't in pain. He's had juvenile arthritis his whole life. On my worst days, it feels like I can't really get out of bed. I feel aching, I can't walk as easy and move my arms to pick things up. As a baby, doctors didn't know what was wrong. He couldn't tell me what was going on. All we knew that with the crying and the not wanting to walk or wait bed, that something was going on. And then basically, because there's no test for juvenile arthritis, it was a process of elimination. After six months of hospital visits and hundreds of tests, the Turners finally had a diagnosis. Since then, their lives have changed forever. Put my career on hold, learn all the medical lingo, learn how to administer medications, keep a diary of all the symptoms so that we were able to speak with the doctors and let them know from time to time what was going on. And basically just still then try to keep the family unit together and have a life in amongst all the medical appointments. After all other treatments failed, Bailey is now part of an international clinical trial for the next seven years. He's responding well, but is still extremely fragile. Yeah, I can't play many physical sports because I usually get sore after I finish. I fracture a lot easier. Chronic pain affects 8 million Australians just like Bailey. He and his mum Jo join us now here in the studio. Thank you for joining us on Studio 10. Jo, if I can start by asking, how difficult was it for you? Because you didn't know what was wrong with Bailey and he was in so much pain. Well, initially, Bailey was a baby, so, of course, he couldn't communicate. His way of telling us something was wrong was crying. And it was up to us as his parents to interpret whether it was a hungry cry, a dirty nappy cry, or I'm in pain and I need something done, cry, which is what it eventuated as. And I saw that he wasn't weight-bearing. He was at that age where he was starting to cruise, starting to crawl, and he just wanted to sit and cry in my lap. So I'd made an appointment to the GP to see if we could find out if something was wrong with his foot, which is what I thought. And then before we even made it to the GP, his ankle swelled up literally like a balloon in, in front of my eyes in, in the swimming pool at his regular swimming lesson. So it was off to emergency at John Hunter Children's mm -hmm. Hospital and it was two weeks of being poked and prodded and blood tests. He had every kind of imaging under the sun. I had literally found out the day before that I was pregnant with my daughter Violet, so for much of the imaging I wasn't even allowed to be there to hold him. Mm -hmm. And it was a process of elimination because there's no test for juvenile arthritis. So basically they had to rule out cancer, leukaemia, staph, strep, meningococcal, all these nasty things they were throwing around. And as a parent you're just like freaking mm. because you're saying, what is wrong with my child? I know something is wrong. But it was a case of finding out. How old was he when he was finally diagnosed? Well, after his initial hospital admission, it was a good six months before we were able to get into a paediatric rheumatologist, because at the time there was only one in the state, Dr Geoffrey Chato, who's been Bailey's doctor ever since. And he just took basically one look at him and said, it's juvenile arthritis, admitted him to hospital and started draining the joints and injecting steroids and just started on a really heavy medication program mm. from there on, and it's been that case all along. Mm. Will he outgrow it? At this stage, cover your ears, darling, um, <laughs> his initial diagnosis was looking good. He has the type of juvenile arthritis that 70 to 80% of children outgrow or go into spontaneous remission by puberty. But because Bailey's arthritis has now spread from head to foot um, and it's become a more extended form of the disease, it's now the prognosis is looking that it's going to be lifelong. Well, Bailey, I've got some good news. My daughter was diagnosed with a rare form of juvenile arthritis when she was a little girl. And she's beaten it. Mm. We did everything they said, so that might be your outcome as well. Yeah. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. Yeah, and me so. too. Because how um, how do you go each day? Because it must be really painful, is it? Yeah, it's mainly the, I I get most of the pain on cold days because mm. it, it swells up my joints and freezes them, so mm -hmm. it really hurts. And uh, otherwise, I usually are okay because the uh, medications I take. Mm. How do you deal with the pain? Because I think, you know, looking at you, I wouldn't think that you're in, you know, that you're in pain. Are you in pain at the moment? Uh, not right now, mm. no. But when I am, I usually distract myself by playing games or something. Mm -hmm. What kind of games do you like? Uh, video games. 
Uh, <laughs> Minecraft, you've been yes. a bit of a... Of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you're pretty close to your sister Violet, aren't you? Uh, kind of. <laughs> Violet's here. I've met Violet. Yeah. Don't say, don't say anything that's going to get you into strife afterwards. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because Joe, it must be something that, as a family, it's um, it's brought you closer. But it, it brings us challenges, doesn't it? How do you manage as a family? Well, for us, because Bailey's had this since he was an infant and because Violet has been involved in this process mm. since she was in utero, this is our normal. Mm. We've been managing this for 12 years and it's only when you stop and think and find yourself sitting in a TV studio talking about it that you go, yeah, this isn't what everybody else does and it's mm. only when you go to hospital for more blood tests or I have to get out the medication because I give Bailey two injections every week at mm. home and... It's only when I have to remind him to do his stretches or when he wakes up one morning and go, Mummy, I can't move my neck, um, mm. that you go, you stop and pause and go, this isn't normal. Mm. This is our normal, mm. but it's not the normal. Mm. Well, he looks pretty good on it. I agree. Really. The medication's <laughs> working. Once That's the trick. You find the right combination of medication and you can give these kids as decent a childhood mm. as possible, which is the aim. Mm. John Bailey, thank you so much for joining us this morning on Studio 10 and sharing your story. You. And Bailey, all the best. And good luck with Minecraft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After the break here on Studio 10, just exactly what is chronic pain and what can you do to make sure you don't get it? Expert advice coming up next. <laughs> Wow, I can't believe I'm on the TV. You're watching Studio 10 live across Australia. I've got very heavy bones, but it's all thanks to our very good friends at Evergreen Tours. They don't mind my bones at all. It's a world of discovery. Thank you, John. Chronic pain affects one in three Australians. It's one of the nation's most costly health problems and one few of us understand. So let's find out more about it now from Dr Coralie Wales from Chronic Pain Australia. Good morning, Doctor. Good Thank morning. you for joining us. Thank you. How do we know if we do have chronic pain? We all know what acute pain is. We grow up with acute pain. It's pain that you get when you break your leg or you hurt yourself and you dust yourself down and then after a little while the pain goes away when you've healed. Chronic pain doesn't do that. Chronic pain is pain that lasts for longer than you would expect it to. So, you know, arbitrarily maybe six months, um, three to six months. Once you've had pain for that long, you know that you've got chronic pain. It's long-term pain. Who does it affect? Uh, it affects anybody. Uh, mm. It can affect people. In, it, we've just done some research which shows that for men, you're more likely to have chronic pain after a trauma. Mm. For women, you're more likely to have chronic pain after a disease state. So autoimmune diseases like lupus or arthritis or, um, you know, diabetes. Um, or it can just be medically unexplained. You mm. can have pain that happens and it's very hard to pin down mm. where that pain comes from. Because, Doctor, it's something that not a lot of people talk about um, because... I think about when you go through, you know, you have a bit of a pain and then it goes away, but to actually try and have that constantly every day, mm. the impact that that must have on your life, mm. on your mood, mm. um, how can people deal with it or work through it or get better? Look, it's a really complex mm. um, phenomenon and I think it's important when you talk to people in pain that have had pain for a long time, what they'll often say is that reflecting back, it's a journey. Mm -hmm. And you struggle for a long time with your identity and you say, well, I used to be a superwoman or a superman mm. um, and so therefore I'm going to keep doing those things. And so you keep doing things that are actually keeping you in pain. Mm. So for a lot of people, it's actually standing back, reflecting on your life, what is important? What are the things that are really important? So that balance thing is really critical, that journey thing. But more than anything, if you're having pain that lasts, there are such things as pain specialists. These are highly qualified ah. doctors who do their basic degree and then they do their specialty in anaesthetics or rheumatology or you know, any one of a number of things. Then they do their pain training. Mm. So if I was in pain for longer than three or six months, I'd be looking for one of those people and I'd be asking for a multidisciplinary team around me of a specialised physiotherapist, a specialised psychologist. Um, and you can find these people um, by going to the Australian Pain Society website. They've got a... a um... So somebody watching could go mm. to that website, mm. but I presume they could also go 
go to their GP and ask for a referral? A absolutely, that's right. They're dotted all over Australia. It's a, it's a relatively new specialty. It's been going since the 1990s. Uh, but it's really important to get your team right. Mm. If you're dealing with people who don't understand pain, you can start feeling that you're going crazy. Mm. Don't do that because you've got a microphone. Oh. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, thank you for that. And I suppose, too, it's one of those things that people think, oh, no, it, it'll be right, it'll, it'll get better. You, you actually need to act, don't you? Do you do need to take action. You need to get help. You need to get help earlier rather than later. The longer you leave it, the more chronic your, your pain becomes. Mm. Uh, it's especially true after surgery. If, mm. you've if you're going to go into hospital for a, a replacement or something like that, uh, it's important to have that conversation before the surgery because mm. what we know is that chronic pain can be a result of not getting treated for pain after surgery. Uh -huh. So get your pain management specialist in before the surgery, learn as much as you can about what's going to happen and get medicated for pain. Mm. Don't be frightened of taking painkillers. They're the Rolls Royce for us when we're in pain. Mm. We don't want to take them forever, mm. but um, at the right times they're highly appropriate. Good advice. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us and I'm well, glad we're having the conversation on this very important topic. Yeah, you're welcome. And if you'd like any more information, you can go to nationalpainweek.org.au.